Hey guys, um, I'm back on YouTube for uh, a quick second. <laughs> um, hopefully I'll make some more videos, but today I just wanted to go through how to do a site cross section. So basically what this is, is um, you have a site, so you have a plan, and then you wanna cut through that plan to see how the gradient is or the slope on that land. So before you start building onto that um, piece of land, you know how the slope works, how steep it is or how uh, shallow it is. Okay, so uh, let's go. So I'm just gonna take us through what we're gonna do quickly. First, we're gonna go through the geographic information system. This will basically give us the map and also help us um, know where the contours are. Generally, um, it depends which country or city you're from. Uh, you'll have a system that's in accordance with wherever you live, basically. And the system should give you side contours, um, sewer lines, municipality lines, all of those, in, those things you'd need in order to design. Um, once we enter this uh, system, then we're going to set contours onto the given map. I just want to go through how you do that with you guys. And then we're gonna take a screenshot or a snippet of that map and then paste it into AutoCAD. So I use AutoCAD in order to scale this. It is another way to do this um, using Rivet or ArchiCAD. Basically what you would do in Rivet or ArchiCAD is you would build the whole model um, with the massing tool or whatever, how you build your models in, in those programs. And then you would just take a section right through the entire site. But let's say we haven't masked it up and we're, um, so we can't do that. We're gonna use AutoCAD. <laughs> okay, so as I was saying, we're gonna paste it in AutoCAD. Then we're gonna rescale the map. Rescaling the map is very important because you're not gonna be able to go up the certain amount of meters or lay out your meters accordingly. It's just gonna be incorrect. <laughs> you have to rescale it. There is a video on this channel already on how to scale a map in AutoCAD. So I'm going to skip past the rescaling in this video. If you want to know how to rescale it, uh, you can check out the other video on the channel. Thank you. Uh, then we'll draw the points for the gradients. Um, I'm going to take us through this step by step. So don't stress. <laughs> All right. Um, this is the GIS. Uh, map for the city that I live in. So basically, once you open the GIS, uh, you would go to the, um, the search bar and you'll search for whichever place you're looking for, your site. Then um, these are your tools. We're going to go into layers, uh, cadastral, cadastral again, and here you go, contours two meters. What contours two meters basically means is these are the lines representing um, how the land moves. So the two meters means that every contour is a two meters up. So here we see it says 16 and 18. That basically means from this line to this line, we moved up two meters. And from 18 to 20, again, the two meters. You can see the distance between the 16 and the 18 are quite short. What this means is you go up two meters at a very short distance. Um, therefore, this land where all the contours are quite close together is a steeper piece of land compared to where it says 14 and 16, um, they're quite far apart. So that two meters going up is very shallow. Um, the land is almost relatively flat. Okay, <laughs> this is a very, um, just a plot of land that I chose for this example. It's not a specific place or anything. I thought it was a good example. So we're gonna use the snipping tool. You can just use the screenshot method as well, but we're using this one here. <laughs> Don't forget to select the map, I mean the scale in the map, because you need to rescale it once we get into AutoCAD. Okay, and you're gonna click copy, then get into AutoCAD and you'll paste it here. I've already pasted it here and rescaled it. Like I said, the rescaling video is on this channel if you want to know how I did that. Um, so let's get into it now. Um, Let's talk about where you would cut your site. So I'm going to just use my polyline here and show you. Now you can see that the contours move in this direction and that shows us the steep, where the land is steep and where the land is shallow. So that is where you would make your site cross section in this direction. Perfect. You wouldn't do it in the other direction because that doesn't show um, any change in land. I hope that makes sense. 
try to comment if it didn't make sense and I'll do a follow up video explaining exactly what I mean. Um, but yeah, generally you can see right now when I've drawn this line, I didn't take it to our edges because this is an example and I don't want to take too, too much of your time. But generally, if this whole picture is your map that you're using, you would take it to the very two ends of your map. We do the entire section uh, through, unless in your project specifically, you didn't have to do that and you just had to do a section through your building and include the site in the building, then you wouldn't have to do this. But this is a site, site cross section, so we're going to take it through the, the entire site. Um, now I'm going to just draw a rectangle around this just for myself. <laughs> This will be our site boundaries right now. So this is where I'm saying our plan ends and starts. Cool. Um, next, we have to look at where the contours intersect with this line. Because remember, this line represents the section line. This is where we're cutting through that land. And we will go through polyline again and pick a different color. Now we need to see where these contours are intersecting with um, this line. So we can see there's one here, let's do that. That is our 14 meter line. What 14 meters basically means it's like um, 14 meters above ground level where, it meet, where it's like zero. So the land is completely flat at zero. We're going up 14 meters from there. But obviously we went up two meters, two meters each time till we got to 14. I'll show you how to draw that in, in a second. But let's just do this. So this line is going to go and mark the points where the contours intersect with our section line. That's what this blue line is going to represent. Here is our numbers. You can see how um, each time it's going up by two meters. And you can see how close these contours are. So that means this land is quite steep. OK, perfect. Okay, now we're just going to select this. I'm selecting everything, including this um, square I made around it. Copy and move it over here. Now we'll draw our base. So our baseline is basically going to show us where these lines intersect with our sectional lines. So this way, remember that this drawing is in plan and we need it to be in section view. So I'm going to draw a baseline here. Let's make it green. And let's see where these lines intersected. Okay, so this is our 14 meters. So let's make it 14. So yeah. This is the 14 meters above the ground level. So when you lay this out on your plan, you would never like have it doing this. You'd never do that because um, this end of this line, the green line, at the end of this green line, it's not zero. We, we drew this green line, so we don't actually know where zero is. So you wouldn't lay it out like that. Instead, you would lay it out in this way with this sharp edge at the, the end, or you would just continue it until the edge of the page. It just depends on how you want to lay it out because at the end of the day, your aesthetic on your page layout is very important as well. So let's move this back. And let's see where else this is intersecting. Um, we can actually just take this, say extend, and then extend all these contour points to that line. So for this, I used the extend tool and I used this as the baseline for where these lines are extending to. Perfect. Now we know that from this 14 to the 16, we moved up two meters. So on the 16, we will move up two meters. Perfect. So you can see this is the two meter we moved up. Now I'll come back to 14 and draw my line. So now you can see here that it is a very shallow line coming up, which means the gradient here is not steep. And we will do it once again here. So from the 16 to the 18, we go up to another two meters. 
And I'm just going to move this. This is quite a lengthy process, um, but that's how it is. <laughs> it has to be a lengthy process. Um, this is the way I do it. So I am apologies that it is something that's gonna take you a little while. There are some shortcuts to do it, but I'm just taking us through the longer way because I think it's the easiest way to grasp um, what's happening. But I will make a different video to show like some AutoCAD um, shortcuts because I do think it would be very useful. I'm gonna copy this. Remove this here. You can see when I did that, these lines end up here. The reason for that is because um, these contours are not evenly spaced. So if you were working on a project and you're just making the assumption that all the contours are evenly spaced and make an even gradient, there's a high chance you could be wrong because in real life, um, contours are generally not evenly spaced. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to stop soon, just because I um, don't want to waste y'all's time <laughs> with me doing this. But I hope that uh, this helps demonstrate how to do it a little bit more. It is a lengthy process, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty decent way to do it. <laughs> um, and also you can see here what I was saying about each time we're moving up two meters in case it's a little bit difficult to, vis to see here. Um, this bottom of this line here on 16 is in line, well, on 18, apologies. Um, the bottom of the line on 18 is in line with the top of the line on 16. So what that basically means is we went across here and then up two meters. We went across to the next contour, we went up two meters. Now, of course, when you're drawing your side cross section, you can't have your contours looking too sharp, like a step up situation. So we're going to angle it like this. So this is how um, basically you would do it, is you would take the top of each line now and just let them all meet. This is going to give you a very sharp look as well because I'm using polyline and not the curves as yet. Um, you can immediately go in with curves. Oh, I only had one left here. <laughs> okay. And up and cool. Okay, now that we have that, let's erase all the other our helping lines. Let's remove those. And now you can see this is what your gradient would look like. But of course, this is a quite a this still is quite sharp because I just use polyline. The way to make it smoother is you would use arc, come in and just pick up. We come in and use arc and just smoothen out your lines like that. So it would end up being a bit more curvy. And yeah, it just depends on the visual aesthetic you're looking for. But that's how to draw up your site cross section. This is how it would look like in the end. And then, of course, you can come in and just delete all of these other lines, your drafting lines. You can just delete them at the end because they were just there to help you. <laughs> Perfect. And yeah, how you would lay this out on a page now. Uh, I have another video already up on this channel on how to lay out this in, of course, layout setting, page setting, and then turning it into PDF and scaling your drawings and everything on AutoCAD. The video is already uploaded on this channel for that specific tutorial. Um, but yeah, that's how you do it. Uh, thank you, I hope this was helpful. And I was saying the other methods of doing this, I would use um, ArchiCAD or Rivet. Basically you would build up the site and then take the section through that built up mass. Um, the way you would build up your site, I have a video of that already on how to do it on Archicad um, on this channel. But 
a quick rundown, you basically need to do the GIS thing that I did earlier with the map and the contours, scale it, paste it on, and then just trace over it with your massing each contour piece and then move it upwards two meters. This is just very rough me saying how to do it, but the full video is on here. I think it's only seven minutes long. Okay, um, I hope this was helpful. Please let me know any questions or like anything that I missed, any other helpful things or anything you guys want to see. I hope this video is not too soft because I am recording it on my computer on Zoom. <laughs> I don't have any equipment and yeah, okay. Uh, good luck and I'll see you in the next one.